Alex, please tell us why people should not draft Alvin Kamara for fantasy football in 2023. All right, here we are. Alvin Kamara, 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 whatever. He hit people in a bar a couple years ago, and now he's suspended for three games. So that's number one. You have to deal with that, right? Breaking news this past couple weeks, or the last week he met with Roger Goodell. He's out for three weeks. Um, okay. Jason, can you, can, you, uh, can you tell me uh, who led the Saints in rushing touchdowns last year? Uh, I would guess last season it was maybe Taysom Hill. Yeah, you're exactly correct. <laughs> he had seven rushing touchdowns. As a oh, as a Alvin as an Alvin Kamara owner, I know how many times he did not score, which is seven. They gave it to Taysom Hill seven times. He, Kamara, in retrospect, only scored two t- rushing touchdowns. Two. He finished not where you wanted because he was taken in the first round, late second round last year, right? So let me just keep scrolling down here. Where did Kamara finish? Oh, yep. There we go. Running back 18. So not great. Not terrible for only scoring four total touchdowns because his targets and reception saved him. But if you have to deal with a three-game suspension, you have to take him probably early round four is my guess, late round three. I understand the Derek Carr aspect of this where if he's going to be under center the whole time, but I guarantee you that Taysom Hill will be getting snaps in that offense because Pete Carmichael is still their offensive coordinator. He's been there for 15 seasons and the way that they've deployed Taysom Hill the last couple of years, it destroys Kamara's value and that's why you shouldn't draft him. Alvin Kamara was a top 10 running back each of his first five seasons of his career on a points per game basis prior to last season's debacle. And uh, he was terrible. He sucked having on a team last year. He sucked and he was healthy the whole year. Well, he missed a couple weeks, missed weeks two and four. Here's his out. Here's games that he had. Half PPR, 6.1, 6.3, 7.7, 6, 4, and 4.7 for a number one running back that you have on your team. Now, he's going to be your number two running back where he's being taken now. Sorry for cutting you off. He was incredibly frustrating other than his 38-point week in week eight. Had double-digit fantasy points in eight out of 18 games, so just under half. And that is with several people not named Derek Carr at quarterback. In fact, Alex, can you name all of the quarterbacks to throw a pass for the New Orleans Saints last season? I can, actually. All right, hit me with your best shot. Blandy Dalton. Yeah. Jameis and Taysom Hill. And Ian Book as well. Three out of four, not bad. Uh, <clears throat> Thank you. Um, he's an explosive player. It was a one-off. They didn't have a quarterback. They resorted to Taysom Hill, who had more than five rushing attempts in six games because that is how desperate they were at quarterback after Jameis and Andy went down. Well, really, Jameis went down and Andy was inept. <laughs> Yeah, not great. Although Andy Dalton, 18 touchdowns, nine picks. Bears quarterbacks have been worse than that other than when they're Andy Dalton for the last three decades. Um, So, hey, I get get it. He's been in an elite, well-known player. He's suspended for three weeks. You can't put him in your IR slot. You're going to have to sit there. And then once he comes back, he'll be okay. He'll, He'll explode for a week or two. Now, if you're going to tell me he's going to get a bunch of checkdowns and it's a PPR league, I'm more interested. Half PPR, though? Yeah. Kamara is currently being drafted as running back 18, which is 47th overall. 
Which so is where he finished last year. Getting him at the end of the fourth round right now. Running back 18. You are salty because of how he finished last year relative to where you had to draft him to get him. I believe if you drafted Kamara at running back 18, it's a value. He's a number one running back. There's really no one there for him to split carries with other than what, Taysom Hill? Yeah. And Taysom Hill is not going to have five plus rushing attempts in six games this year. So you you don't you don't know that just for the record. Uh, I, I do know that as we've done uh, some mock drafts <laughs> I that that you have been drafting uh what is it, Kendra Miller, uh who they took in round three. Um, so you, you can't say that, that they have nobody who might actually be a, a good little stash for the first three weeks here. Just for the first um, three weeks. Right? Uh, somebody that you can get in like round, I don't know, 12, 13? Yeah, 100%. Um, so to, w- wanted to highlight that. Um, as far as where he's going on sleeper, so he's going to pick 38 currently on sleeper. Uh, Aaron Jones and Joe Mixon are the two running backs going after him. Um, I would definitely much rather have Mixon than Kamara. Uh, Aaron Jones, I'm a little bit indifferent on, um, but d- definitely would prefer Joe Mixon to Alvin. Okay. <clears throat> and, I, and I'm fairly certain that you strongly agree with that as well. Yes. Yeah, I would definitely take Mixon to Kamara just because of the offense. Yeah. I know, I know since he's going to put up a boatload of points. All right. Next up, Alex, tell me why you would not draft Damian Pierce. Why are you making me go first every time? Why don't, don't, you, don't you want to go first? Because I think you're wrong. Uh, maybe. Uh, don't you want to draft guys that probably like have good touchdown upside? Like... How many points or how many touchdowns are you expecting the Houston Texans to score? So everybody loved Damian Pierce at the beginning of last year. He did get nicked up. He ended up missing the last four weeks of the season. Um, He was clearly their best player on offense when healthy. And even when he wasn't healthy, he was probably still their best player on offense. Really started out, you know, a little bit slow, but the you know, here's his, his stretch here in the middle of the season, 17, 22, 18, 13, 12, 13, 11. I had people texting me, Hey, you know, got him maybe round five, round six for keeper leagues. Do I trade for him? Like, do I try to convert him into a better short-term asset? And then kind of the end came quick 2.7, 3.1, uh, before getting hurt two games later. So he's fine. I think it's more of just uh, he doesn't have a high touchdown upside. And so I just don't want to reach for – and I get, it's not even reaching, right? So he's going pick 52. Um, but there, there's – again, this is a – I would rather have other players in this position. I'd rather have Cam Akers who's going after him. I'd rather have Alexander Madison who's going after him. I'd rather have James Conner who's going after him. All kind of similar backs, right? Those four where they're kind of the undisputed workhorse. Except I don't know if Damian Pierce is the undisputed workhorse there because they signed somebody to a significant contract that nobody wants to talk about. And I, and I just don't understand why Devin Singletary is not being talked about more in this backfield because he's, he's still pretty young and he's going to split this backfield up pretty substantially. I don't think that Akers or Madison or Connor are going to have a split backfield. I do think Damian Pierce will. Devin Singletary is on a one-year $2.75 million contract. Like that's yeah. that's pennies. 
Saquon signed a one year contract for eleven million. This is less than yep. three. Okay, but I mean, it, obviously, I mean, it's, Singletary it's really, and Saquon are are different, right? But Singletary in his career, seven hundred seventy five yards. Lucrative contract, like that's that's meager. Singletary's never had less than six hundred eighty seven yards in his career. So, if you're going to take the Houston Texans rushing attack last year, which combined for a total of of 1,400 yards, just under 1,500 yards. Damian Pierce had 939 of those. And you slide Singletary in, who's going to have at least 600 yards rushing, probably. That, you know, there's probably, I don't know. I I don't, I'd be shocked if he goes over 1,000 yards this year, quite frankly, because of Devin Singletary being in that backfield. Okay. Damian Pierce still finishes the running back 25 and put up almost a thousand yards and only four touchdowns over 13 games before an ankle injury ended his season last year. He was running back 14. Okay. Running back 14 from weeks two through 14 when healthy and in the starting role. He is being drafted as running back 21 right now. And that's not a small sample size. We're talking about 13 weeks of prove it. And he was a borderline RB1 that you can get in the fifth round. Yes, the Texans signed Devin Singletary to a pennies contract for less than $3 million. And yes, they have a new head coach in D'Amico Ryan's. But you know what they also have? You know what a new head coach means? A new offensive coordinator. Bobby Slowick, who has spent the last six seasons with the 49ers. Do you not think that they're going to find creative ways to get the balls into the hands of their best playmakers? There's going to be Maybe, some- but he was, he was also the passing game coordinator. He wasn't necessarily focusing on the running back. Fair. He spent six seasons with San Fran. He I understand that, but he was, he, was, he was coordinating the passing game, not the running game, Jason. We're talking about running backs here. I'm not so, even... I don't care. Like, I it's mean, going to be a all, much better offense. They have CJ Stroud, a quarterback, who cannot be any worse than Davis Mills was last year. I mean, it, he very well could be, just for the record. No. He... R- yeah, I mean, rookie quarterbacks are are not like lock it in. They're going to be great right away. Also, game script. How many games do you expect the Houston Texans to win this year, Jason? It doesn't matter. Damian Pierce no, only put up four matter. touchdowns last year and was the running back 14 with it only four matter. touchdowns. Right. And now Singletary's there and they're Who's not going to be scoring that many points. He's not trash, Singles, though. Singletary is not a threat at all to Damian Pierce in any way, shape, or form. He's I a, think you're He's a middling wrong. running back who cannot catch the football that got signed to a, instead of a second contract of any meaningful value, a one-year deal, which is crap for a 25-year-old running back. He's not 30. He's just an average running back running back who cannot catch a ball will not threaten Damian Pierce's third down value at all. And Damian Pierce, even without the touchdowns last year was running back 14. He's going as running back 21. That is value. He's going in the fifth round. He is not your first running back. He is not the guy that you draft. That's on the offense with all of the, the surefire bet to put up 10 plus touchdowns and 1500 yards. Like we are talking about your flex player at this point in the fifth round, you're getting Jason a running back two. In your flex. Who had more catches last year, Damian Pierce or Devin Singletary? I don't care. They're two different offenses. Yeah, and Devin Singletary was never on the field. Devin right? Singletary because, was on because the field they were, because all they had behind him was a rookie running back. Yeah, they he was splitting up carries with a whole bunch of guys in Buffalo. Um, Not really. Singletary, he was by far the rushing leader on that team. He has had at least... 
so he had 29 catches as a rookie. Since then, he's had 38 or more catches each of the last three years. Um, so, yeah, he's going to be used in the passing game. And also, don't forget that they were subbing Rex Burkhead in a whole bunch to take snaps away from him to throw the ball. And so if you can actually run the ball with Singletary and or throw it to him, I just think that there's going to be opportunities there that Damian Pierce won't have this year because Singletary will be on the field. That's, I mean, like actually I said, accurate. you are entitled to your opinion, however wrong it may be. Devin Singletary was on the field for more than 700 snaps last season. That was a lot. So to say that he was splitting it up with a bunch of dudes is factually incorrect. They should have kept him then. So, no, because, again, he's an average running back. He's exceedingly average. Average enough to bite out a Damian Pierce. 789. 70 some odd. Let's do some quick math. Six, 65% of snaps he was on the field for. Yeah. Pushing 66. But I digress. Easily the starting running back. Like, of course he caught balls. It's also just a much different offense. But look, you want to pass on Damian Pierce? You want to pass on an RB2? In the fifth round is your flex. You guys can go ahead and do that. You know, it's all good. I There's some other guys that I would rather have instead of Pierce. Akers, Madison, Connor uh, being the three that are going behind him. Akers um, lost I, his job. Akers literally was removed from the team for several weeks last season. Madison, if you want to talk about dudes that are going to be splitting their, their job – Splitting the you have no idea if Madison is is an every down back. Like I just I I just disagree. ladies and gentlemen, according to the Sacco's rankings, Jason <laughs> currently has Cam Akers at twenty one, James Conner at twenty, and Damian Pierce at twenty three. So So they're all but, right next to each other. I'm just saying. Yeah. Uh, and I'm just telling you that my preference is to have those other guys, which you actually agree with. So. <laughs> and Rather again, and sit here there, and continue to argue. There, there's so there's so many things. Uh, again, this is a preference thing, right? There are enough factors for this particular player that I that go against him. Game script, Devin Singletary, rookie quarterback that. I just won't have him on my team and I prefer other people. And I think a lot of people listening or watching do too. All right. Our next running back is Jameer Gibbs. Alex, please tell everyone why you don't want to draft Jameer Gibbs. The exact same reason as the last two, because I don't know how many touchdowns he's going to score. You look at the Detroit Lions offense last year and what happened? Let's let's take a look here. They oh, I don't know. They just gave the ball to Jamal Williams every time they got inside the five yard line until he scored. And there wasn't a whole lot else to go around. Right. DeAndre Swift was there. Don't you see Gibbs kind of fill in that Swift role? Like ninety nine attempts for DeAndre Swift, five hundred yards. I'm, it's going to be more than that, probably. Substantially. But Montgomery. Yeah, but Montgomery is going to be the back here that is probably going to score the touchdowns. Not necessarily the guy you want to draft, but the guy that's going to score the touchdowns. Currently, Jameer Gibbs is going at pick 36. So right at the turn uh, in round three to four uh, ahead of guys of... So he's, he's the, the running back going after just after Travis Etienne. He's going before guys Kenneth Walker, Kamara, Aaron Jones, Mixon, Dobbins, uh, and Miles Sanders. It's an unknown for a team that ran the ball a good amount, surprisingly. Ben Johnson, still their offensive coordinator. He is, I'm actually surprised he didn't get more head coaching 
buzz after the way that their offense was. Detroit ran the ball the 13th most times in football last year, just uh, just over 28 attempts a game. But yeah, it's I think they they are a pass first offense here, and I, that does favor Gibbs at least a little bit if if you're looking at it. But Montgomery is not a slouch out of the backfield either, catching the ball. So. You want to talk about contracts, which we were just doing. They did give Montgomery a substantial contract uh, to hop away from the Bears to go to the Lions. So they're going to use him. I think that Montgomery is going to be the goal line guy. And because of that, like, I don't, I definitely don't see, maybe I'll eat these words, right? But I definitely don't see him having like that Chris Johnson rookie season or that Forte rookie season back in like 2008, where they were just, you know, ball hogs, they scored from long ways out and were catching balls out of the backfield. They, he might catch the balls in the backfield or out of the backfield, but I think it's between the twenties uh, and Montgomery's the guy pounding it in. So this is a touchdown uh, projection from my standpoint where I think it's an unknown rookie running back. And you, you're, you're kind of hoping that he finishes where he does um, instead of it, uh, there's definitely no guarantee. I think that Jameer Gibbs is potentially a value in any PPR format. Um, their GM has called him an offensive weapon and not a running back. He is not going to line up and run downhill you know, all three downs in a row. That is not Jameer Gibbs. He was drafted with the 12th pick in the first round of April's draft. Um, Surprisingly drafted that high. He garnered all SEC honors as the Alabama Tides top running back. Uh, 151 World attempts damn for tide. almost 1,000 yards in 12 games. Seven touchdowns on the ground. Another three through the air. Uh, also led the team in receptions, believe it or not, with 44. Um, garnered all American honors as an all-purpose player. <clears throat> Jamal, Jamal Williams and DeAndre Swift ran for 361 rushing attempts between the two of them last season. There is more than enough running work to go around. He does not need 275 rushing attempts to be of value. He is not going to play running back for three downs. He is going to be on the field when Monty is on the field. Even at the goal line. If you don't think that they're going to line him up at receiver and put him on an end around and let him chase or, you know, run somebody down to the pylon, I mean, that's exactly what Jameer Gibbs is. Everybody knows what he ran at the Combine. He is speed incarnate. Um, he has one of, if not the best offensive lines in the entire league this season. I think he's a lock as an easy RB2. He is he's being drafted as an RB2, though. And that's, I think, what Alex is really concerned about is... Unlike the last two guys, Jameer Gibbs is going as uh, running back 14 right now, which is a steeper price. Uh, but that it's is a smidge high. That is at the end of the third round. I could see investing in a guy like Jameer Gibbs at the end of the third round. Like he is by far like, and away easily one of the most talented guys in the league. He has big playability. If you watch watch any of his games, the Tennessee game is incredible. He's a one-cut runner that I think translates very easily into the NFL. He's decisive. He is smart. He can read outside zones. I mean, the guy can do anything and everything that you ask him to. So he might be he might be so fast he might not even have a chance to think about it. Um, I, r running a four three six only behind Devin A chain uh, who the Dolphins took, and and your point is fair and a good one. Where 
because he's going to be doing all of the receiving out of the backfield or theoretically a lot of it, right? DeAndre Swift, 70 targets last year, uh, 48 catches. If if they can and get him... he wasn't him, healthy. <laughs> like, Well, <clears throat> yeah, fair. It, but it just never seemed like they used Swift properly um, for whatever reason. I, I don't really know, right? But like, I get the upside. It's there. I think you're buying like you have to pay to get him where he's at so yeah if you are at the the turn and there's no way that you don't or there's no way that you like okay fine i guess but there's just other players that i'd probably rather target who but the the upside's clearly there i get it just a little too rich for my blood for an offense that um should be should be pretty good this year. It, it really should be. And and Jameson Williams being out the first six weeks, I do think might help him get acclimated a little bit quicker uh, because they, they will be lining him up all over the place with, you know, down one of their talented wide receivers. Yeah, I mean, for me, I think it all depends on format. If you are full PPR, I have no problem paying that end of third round price. Um, because the targets are going to be there. I really think yep. that he pushes 100 targets this season in his rookie year. Um, which, which would basically be Alvin Kamara. Yeah. Like a, a, like as a rookie who ended up you know finishing top 10. So if you're full PPR, 100% smash Jameer Gibbs. Other than that, that's when you lose me. His ADP should slide a uh, half point standard. I mean, if you're not getting any points for the receptions, it makes it a tougher Tough. sell. And and or just stop playing in that league because it doesn't sound like much fun. Yeah, true. The really low points. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. Well, thanks. Thanks for agreeing with me uh, on all three of these guys, Jason. I appreciate it. You are welcome, Alex.